Hello world and welcome, I'm Karhu the Great Bear of the North, and this is Tempest Citadel. I'm very excited to be playing this game, it's a combination of science fiction and fantasy, two of my favorite genres. I mean, look at this, look at this opening screen. There's Arnold Schwarzenegger with, with a, a, a mohawk and like cyborg glasses and a handlebar mustache, shooting at a dragon. This is amazing. This is going to be amazing. I did receive this copy for free. I will get that out of the way now. But I only put games on here that I actually like. I received many games for free that I don't actually like that I don't put on this channel. So here you go. So let's get into this. We're going to start with normal. Um, let's show the tutorial just so I can show you guys how to go through this. Um, I did already re record this episode, but I forgot to record the game audio. So you're, the experience for you probably would have been a little bit terrible. So just letting you know. Heads up. Now welcome. Tempest Citadel is a team manager game that puts you in command of a company of explorers marooned on a planet ravaged by endless storms. You are a high-level strategist and commander. The details of combat can be delegated to your officers. You will build a base and explore this planet, adapting your technology and crew to face unknown challenges. I actually know some of the challenges, but shh. Planet Indra, January 8th, 2072. Short tutorial will show you the basics, that's how it works. Click to read, welcome commander. Awaken captain, the time has come. We have traveled farther from our home than we could have dreamed. Everywhere I direct my optics and sensors, I find none of the constellations or galaxies we saw in the skies above Terra. The stars are older here, the darkness of space is still pure, and the planet we were commissioned to colonize is nowhere in sight. In its place, the ship has taken us to a world like we have never seen. We entered orbit only minutes ago. After conducting repeated diagnostic tests on our navigation and propulsion systems, my findings are conclusive. This is no mistake. Everything that they told us about this year-long voyage was simply a lie. The planet is and always was our destination, and now something has, been, has taken control and is drawing us into the atmosphere. From here on, I am no longer permitted to make executive decisions. This is why I have revived you early. You are the one who decides. I must ensure that any lingering effects of cryostasis have not impaired your consciousness, your reasoning, or your memories before I can relinquish control. So I must ask you before our true mission can begin. Tell me who you are. I am the captain of the Cedar IMV 2037. That's me, I'm not... Yeah, that's what I am. Thank you, Captain. I am Aya, with callsign Sparks, the senior, the senior systems officer and AI of the ship. As my programming directs, I am at this moment reviving the other five senior officers and informing them of our situation. The rest of the crew will remain in cryostasis until you direct otherwise. We will enter the planet's atmosphere in 30 minutes. We can check the vault, which is kind of like the, the lore from this mission. There's something else, Captain. It seems that hearing your voice has unlocked a set of encrypted files on my mainframe. As they are addressed to you as eyes only, only you will be able to access them. If they're from the Authority, they may detail their true mission parameters. Extract the true mission from the vault. We're going to open the true mission data. And just letting you know, I'm going to read through all of this. Close the panel when ready. I'm not ready to close the panel. You know, we're going to open this back up. Where's the vault? There's the vault. So, interstellar gift. Transcript of a public statement from the Terran Federation of Nations, delivered by Secretary General Madeline Ming on December 10th, 2017. Firstly, I'd like to thank the people of the world for their patience, their understanding, and their trust. At hand was no small task. In our midst was the source of a great unknown, and in these troubled times, the world deserves peace from certainty. We gathered the world's brightest minds so that we could afford you this, and now those efforts have borne fruit. At this time, I can confirm that the meteorite which made impact in the Ermian Lake 14 days ago contained a highly advanced technology from a foreign power. By foreign, I do not mean the nation hosting this conference, nor to the union of governments to which it belongs nor even to the TFN by foreign, I am referring to a civilization not of our world. After meticulously and tirelessly studying the piece of technology hidden in the meteorite, our team of scientists has put forth a number of theories regarding its origins. The strongest of these suggests it is part of the remains of a spacefaring vessel which was involved in a cataclysmic event far outside our galaxy and subsequently destroyed. The state of the vessel's remains is poor, and the damage to it is severe. However, we will continue to study it in hopes that it will bring benefits to the world. The task force is being assembled, not only to coordinate efforts between the multidisciplinary teams of scientists, but also to keep the public informed of our progress. We have all, at some point time in, at some time in our lives, looked up to the stars and asked ourselves to an age-old question. Now we know. We are not alone. I would urge all of you 
If you were to take one thing away from this, let it be a message, one that has taught us to dream without fear, to imagine the impossible, and to build our tomorrows brighter to, than today's. Let this gift be hope. In the false mission, this is an excerpt from a mission brief for the crew members of the Terran spacefaring vessel, the TSV Cedar IMB, IM, uh, Cedar IMB 2037, dated May 30th, 2036. Mission. To mold the gull, we're not, no, that's not a mission. To establish a settlement on Solom, which will grow into the uninhabited planet's first Terran colony, in preparation for the first wave of settlers from Terra. It'll take about 12 months, the mission itself will then be another 10 to 14 months, and then a 12 month return voyage. Simple mission, right? Go there, set up the base, come back. Peasy, peasy, chicken, squeezy, right? Crew one captain, supported by six senior officers, leading 100 crew members of various ne necessary expertises and backgrounds. Crew composition to be determined. However, this is a private memo for our eyes only from the Admiral of the Terran Fleet, dated December 16th, 2037. Do you remember that night we saw the star fall as kids? You couldn't have been older than eight, and I wasn't much older. The four of us were at my parents' house, lying on the roof, freezing our asses off, looking up at the night sky and dreaming the dreams of kids. I tried telling you all it was even colder in space, but no one believed it. But what did any of us really know back then? None of us had ever been outside our warm little hometown in the south. We'd never even seen snow. Then that light streak across the sky lit everything up in red and white. The ground shook like a stomp of some great giant and everything started changing. I want you to remember that night. I want you to remember how 14 days later, Secretary General Ming's announcement broke apart everything we had grown up believing about the universe. I want you to remember that feeling, being terrified and exhilarated by a longing to look up at the stars and know what it is we saw because we didn't anymore, not, not after that. This is the truth of it. What we call the interstellar gift wasn't a piece of wreckage from an alien vessel, it was a full-sized shuttle pod containing blueprints, parts to build a spaceship, and a message. Somewhere out there, there was a civilization that offered untold technological secrets in exchange for your help. Your mission was never to colonize Solom. It was to answer this call. The planet of the gift's origin, which we've named Indra, is further than you can imagine. You'll think you've spent a year in cryosleep traveling with an ion propulsion engine. In truth, You've just spent a year moving through hyperspace to reach a part of the universe we can barely see. The problem is, the hyperspace drive aboard the Cedar needs one vital component to start a jump. Component to start a jump. An original component found in the interstellar gift. The scientists call it a catalyst. If you're reading this, then you would have arrived at Indra, and your voyage there would have been ex would have expended the one catalyst we were given beyond reuse. Maybe these wise aliens never intended for you to return home. We don't know for sure. At any rate. You'll need to scour the planet and find another before you can come home. Otherwise, you never will. For what it's worth, I'm sorry I kept this from you. If you could only see and understand what these beings showed us, they were capable of in just a small piece of their knowledge, you'd know we had no choice. Terra can't sustain itself with the way it's going. We need this. The Terran company you're leading might not be military in name, but deep down, you're a soldier. You've always been a soldier, more than I could ever be, so... So do the mission. Do it and come home, if for no other reason than to break my jaw for this after you do. We haven't abandoned you, we believe in you. We know you'll find your way home. Even though you and I lost touch a long time ago, I remember the kid I grew up with. I saw it in you every day then, and I see it again the day I came to recruit you. You never compromise. You always stay true to yourself, and that's who we need. Don't think of what we told you as a lie. See your true mission on this new planet as a truth which you'll discover and bring home to all of us, with over 100 of Terra's best and brightest at your back. Never forget, a good captain leads, but he does not march alone. Your mission is simple. Go to Indra and learn from its civilization. Study their technology, absorb their wisdom, and return home with the only thing that can keep us going. Power. Huh? Interesting! The hyperspace, cat hyperspace catalyst is the, uh... Original Catalyst was obtained from the Interstellar Gift that landed on Earth with the plans for a spacecraft and a map to our destination, Indra. Since the Catalyst was consumed by our jump here, we must find a replacement. Uh-oh. I understand her present circumstances may be overwhelming. As I did, you will feel outraged. You will feel betrayed. You will feel abandoned to a fate of silent death for the greed of dark-hearted men. However, I would ask you this. What is there to do but move forward and survive? Come. From the deck, we can all see the new world. Goody, 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 I'm enjoying this. 
that's some that's some badass re-entry right there. Um, I, I don't like that. It's time for your first combat mission. You must wake some crew from cryosleep and assign them to a squad to defend the ship. Open the event. Boom. Captain, I realize you still have many questions. This is not the time. The damage to our ship has rendered us unable to fly, and we are in danger. My sensors show multiple life forms of considerable size and number closing in on our location, likely drawn by the commotion of the crash. Their movements suggest feral wildlife. I do not need to say what the harshness of the environment would suggest of their disposition. My scans show that the damage is serious. The repairs will take time. Fortunately, our cryo systems remain fully functional. We can immediately revive a small crew for the operation. We must act quickly, Captain. You will need soldiers to defend the ship against the herd while our engineers mend the ship. You will have to choose the composition of the team carefully. Which of our crew should we revive first? Let's revive a team from cryo. This is the cryo panel. Your crew has been in deep cryo sleep for the journey. Part of your crew has been brought into a lighter cryo suspension ready to be woken up. These crew members are listed on the left of this panel. Right click on a crew member to wake them ready for work. We're going to get Delicious and Nosedive and Forest and Kato and Magic and Slideshow. And there are different tech compositions, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Open the squad panel. Your landing craft has limited capacity for squad members and auxiliary combatants. More advanced designs can expand this capacity. Right click, Delicious Nosedive, Forest, Kato, Magic, and Sideshow. And these names are generated differently each each playthrough. Um, in fact, I think their skills are even... Yeah. Their skills are different each playthrough too. Interesting. Because I had some snipers the first time through. So to start the battle, Terran versus Creatures. Do not go gentle. Defend the ship from beasts while repairs are completed. And this is January 14th, 2072. Combat in Tempest Citadel is about creating the best squad for each mission. Controlling your troops during battles is optional. Unlike an RTS, your troops can fight entire battles automatically. And this is what I'm going to do. The tactics are based on the equipment and abilities you sign them. I don't do well with RTSs. I don't. I get overwhelmed and I get skittish. Drag right mouse button to, to orbit. Uh, mouse wheel to scroll, WSD keys. Yeah, we know how this works. Now let's resume the space battle. Woo! So we're fighting off big bugs. Really big Engage bugs. You. Love it. Love the bugs. I can't scroll in any more than this, unfortunately, which is which is disappointing, but it is what it is. And everybody's doing well. Look at all them bugs. Look at all them bugs. Oh, there's three bugs down here. I didn't even realize that. All right. Guy, but oh, <gasps> I lost a dude. Oh, I didn't do that the first time through. Success, our soldiers have defended the alien creatures and protected the ship. A new wave of hostiles has been detected, Captain. Not creatures, humanoids. With advanced equipment, they're launching a barrage of some kind of sleep gas. Our engineers don't stand a chance. Not liking that. Not liking that at all. So they, they're running away. Senior production officer, Markham Hallcroft, call sign Hammer, reporting in, Captain. Might remember me as the old guy, I'll put you under the table at a drinking contest night before we left Terra. <laughs> then maybe, then again, maybe you don't. Operation was a success. Our soldiers drove the herd away long enough for my guys to fix the ship. We'll be airborne again in a few. It ain't all candy and sweets though. The group who attacked us didn't kill any of my engineers, but they did make off with a piece of our terraform engine. Bonehawk's tracking them down. Don't worry, she'll find the bastards. Those animals out there, there was something else too, huh? Makes our lions back home look like kittens. And something tells me we're wel the welcoming party was just the lightweights in the family. We're gonna need to keep our soldiers out of cryostasis, just my suggestion. My team's got enough to keep the ship together, but you also need to start bringing up other folks soon. Medics, researchers, it takes a village, boss. And you're the chief. Click to evacuate. Amazing. Amazing stuff. This game is super cool. This game is amazing. I love it. Um, the Beast Crew Panel. View the status of your active crew. Monitor food and impact on morale. Somebody went down, but apparently... Hey, that guy, dude kind of looks like me. His name is Jesus Sideshow Evans. 
Jesus. And their morale is good. That's Kato. He's an amateur. These guys are not as skilled as the last time I played. Oh, well. Job soldier. Oh, I can give them different jobs. Excellent. We have four soldiers, two scavengers. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Anyways, we'll get to this a little bit later. The Beasts of Sunrise. Senior scavenging officer Bohawk at, Bonehawk at your service, Captain. Because life's never without irony. When you see a drink in my hand, call me Brenda. I have the locations of the tribesmen who stole our terraform drive. The fact that they managed to travel as far as they did in this kind of hostile terrain tells me they aren't simply resilient. They know this land, and they know it well. Right now, they're still on the move. They haven't made it back to their home base, it seems. But that's likely to change. If we don't act now, we may lose the terraform drive for good, and our mission will be lost. You can leave the scouting to me in the ship's scanners. We'll only need combatants for the dispatch team, and they'll have to move fast. Who should we send? You can view the whole planet from this panel, from the map panel. The world is largely a wilderness shrouded in storms, but when you detect sites of interest, they will be marked on the map. The shaded area shows the range of your landing craft through the storms. As captain, you decide which mission to undertake from the world map. Send your squad to investigate the site. You can change the squad's tactical style and attack to favor different formations and weapons. Launch the landing craft. Launch the lander triggers. Fast time to give your ship time to travel. The current date and time controls at the top of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, start the battle. Start the battle, there we go. Terran versus Volgar. Track the tribesmen who stole our terraform drive through the wilderness, the beasts of sunrise. You can split your squad in separate groups with different tactics and movement orders. Choose a style. Ready. This one is gonna be aggressive, and they're going to be, an, I'm gonna have an assault team, I'm gonna have a sniper team. Choose target priority, and they're gonna target the wounded. Get them out of there as quickly as possible. And they're, they're going to be dense. Actually, no, they're going to have a, a wedge. Drag to a new fire team. He's a scavenger. Where to? I'm going to have my Where scavengers to? in a separate fire team. And they're going to be caution. And they're going to be focused. And they're going to be ragged. There we go. That's how this is going to happen. Let's go. I can click in different places to send them there, but uh, whatever. Boom, 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 This is the, I think, the, the battle advantage. We are doing quite well. We're doing a lot more damage to them than they are to us. I believe that's because we have, um, we have body armor, and they don't. Look at that go. Our squad has destroyed all resistance at Laboratory M6. The battle reports will usually be given the choice of doing a battle report after a battle. Tell us what happens in terms of medics. No wounds were taken. They did well with pistols, their rifles, the enemies weren't as good with rifles. We only have pistols. But yeah, so we'll close the report. Fantastic. Decisive victory. This is behind my head, but morale boost, morale boost for the victory was plus 20. Now the Beasts of Sunrise. Duster reporting in, Captain. I know my age might not show it, but I'm the senior combat officer on board. The pursuit mission was only a partial success. We routed the enemy and took back the terraform drive, but we realized too late that the drive's core was removed. That one tribesman who got away must have taken it. We know which direction they went, but there's been a rise in electromagnetic activity in the area. We'll take some time before we can pinpoint a location. In the meantime, Hatch took some samples from the enemy's bodies to study their physiology. He said he'd have his findings soon. I also spoke with the soldier who was in the fight. Apparently these beastmen have a war cry. Volgar. Hmm. I keep wanting to call them aliens, but that's not right. We're the invaders here. Which is an interesting twist. Life is for the living. Captain, I need to speak with you. It's about the crew. Besides the six of us, seven with Officer Sparks and the crew members you have revived, the rest of the crew currently remain in cryosleep to extend the longevity of our food stores. Yet, whether awake or asleep, as it is, 100 living Terrans are supposed to be on board. Only something has gone wrong, Captain. Twenty men and women have died in cryostasis. The cryotubes have slowed decomposition almost to nothing, but I've confirmed it. They died right at the start of our voyage. All at the same time. Right now, only you and I know of this. Clearly such a death toll could have a disastrous impact on our crew if we let it be known. Panic could be the best case scenario. As such, I have already isolated the cryotubes containing the deceased into one of the five halls of the cryogenics deck. Discreetly, of course. As I see it, we have two options. Our first is to simply leave them there. If we are to believe the wonders hidden in the world below, we may find a way to reverse what's happening to them. In the meantime, they will continue to use up energy. The other option is more... Practical. 
rather than hold out for some fantasy miracle, we can liquefy the bodies for resources to sustain the ship. Doing so would reduce energy use and increase the number of the number of Terrans we can revive. I do not mean to sound cruel, Captain. I could say that using their deaths to help the mission honors their sacrifice, but the truth is, dead is dead. I've not seen it undone. What say you? And I got to admit, part of me thinks that they wouldn't give you this option in the game because it is kind of a fantasy science fiction hybrid thing, the setting. Um, they wouldn't give you this option if there wasn't a chance that we could actually revive them. But at the same time, I do like to kind of role play these games a little bit. And in my particular mind, you don't come back from dead. When you're dead, you're dead, especially if you've been dead for a year. So we're going to liquefy the bodies for resources. It hurts me to say this, but they're not useful to anyone anyway. They're more useful if we liquefy them. I understand. I will not speak of this again unless it is needed. No one will know but us. I will leave the why of this tragedy unspoken. The fact alone that the 20 people who now lie dead were distributed in all five rooms of the cryostasis deck, not to mention spread proportionately across all functional disciplines, leaves little to be imagined. They were chosen. The pertinent question is by whom? It's all for now, Captain. Oh, um, but before I, be, before I again neglect to formally introduce myself, my name is Huang Ming, call sign Patch. As our superior so cleverly thought to imply, I am the senior medical officer at your service. I apologize that I could not meet you before your, our voyage. Had I known I was the last of the crew to be collected, I would not have let myself be detained elsewhere. I had doubts as to who could bear the burden that comes with a mission like ours. After meeting you today, I could see that my doubts were unfounded. Welcome aboard, Captain. Thief hunt. Let's do one more little mission. We've intercepted a radio transmission not long ago, originating from the area in which we've been searching for these members of the so-called Volgar. If the ones who stole our drive core have been struggling to find their way back on foot, it's likely they may have headed there now. We should send a team to follow the transmission source. If we hurry, hurry we might be able to take back the drive core before it's moved deeper into Volgari territory. Whoever you send, they'd better expect a gunfight. Thief, thief hunt, jungle. Threat is 150. Um, intercept a Volgari radio transmission and follow it to the source. We might be able to recover the drive core. Let's do it. Ground combat. Terran versus Volgar. And I love these maps. These maps are super cool. Intercept a, Volga a Volgari radio transmission and follow it to the source. We might be able to recover the drive core. And we're going to do the same two bands that we had before. The aggressive and the further back. And let's see how this goes. Boom, 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 boom. We, we only have pistols. But yeah, we, we're doing like 20 damage to them. Engaging. They're doing one to us. This is pretty good. This is much. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty well. We're smashing them all. They're barely hitting us. We have body armor, they don't. I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. Our squad has destroyed all resistance at military base N5. The site is now open to exploration and scavenging. We did pretty well. 100% of our damage was with pistols. Pretty good. And no injuries, which is great. No wounds were taken. Now we can explore these underground bunkers for resources. We scavenged them room by room, but however, there is a, a time limit. Exploring this room will take 13 minutes. But we only have 2 hours and 31 minutes total. We've discovered a drug den. There is a bio lab, and all this information is behind my head, but I can't figure out a better place to actually put my head. So, yeah. Let's give it a bio lab. We have 14 tools and 9 chems, and that's just going to go right back to our ship. And the tutorial wants me to end the scavenging, but I'm not going to. We discovered a chapel here. We've discovered a factory down here, and that gives us 128 scrap, 30 machinery, 7 tools, 9 chems, and 9 electronics. And we also have a bio lab here, which gives us 64 scrap, 15 machinery, and 9 chems. And now this entire facility is empty. We have 48 minutes left until the storm hits, but everything's done. We're going to return to base. And then our craft flies off. We secured the outpost from the Volgari. But we couldn't capture those that fled. If the drive core was ever there, it isn't anymore. 
The good news is, the outpost is ours now. And I've had my people take a look around. Their findings are several. One, that the fight would have been a lot harder if we'd arrived a week later than we did. The place was mostly still dormant, and we found evidence to suggest that the Volgar had only arrived a day or two earlier. Two, the facilities at the outpost are largely intact. Despite having been long abandoned, I've ordered a team to begin preparing for later use. The workshops and research facilities are highly advanced, so it'll take time to properly understand how it all works. 3. The technology at the outpost bears a striking resemblance to that which powers our ship. This is expected. The ancients who sent the interstellar gift to Terra those years ago were presumed to be masters of this planet. We can be sure that they are the ones who originally constructed this outpost. Lastly, following from this, we can rule out the Volgar as being the ancient race who brought us here. Their tech is entirely different. Could they be the great evil we were warned about in the message of the gift? Whoever they are, they're outsiders to this world. Just like us. And with that, I will call an end to this episode. I'm Karu the Great Bear of the North. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, if it's the first time you're channeling you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, please comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Most importantly, have a fantastic day. Check out the link to this game in the description box below. It does drop a little bit later today or earlier today, depending on when you see it. Most importantly, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all next time on Indra. Bye, everybody.